So we, we're trying to look at the, the TCP connections and using Netstat to look at that. So we're going to use Netcat to create a simple TCP connection. And I'm going to do it in, in some different terminals so that we can see it all at the same time. So on computer 10, so the, the blue one is computer 10, the green one is 13. Okay, 10 and 13, I'm logged into those. Computer 10, down here I'll start the netcat server. To start netcat in server mode, minus L. Tell the netcat software to listen. And we need to choose a port. And the port is a 16-bit number, so it goes up to about 65,000. In practice, we need to choose a number greater than 1,023, so and less than 65,000. Here's a, a simple one. So this tells my Sir Netcat software to listen. Listen in on port 12345. And it's listening now. And still on computer 10, I now I'll use Netstat. Let's show me the TCP connections and let's show me the ones which are listening on this computer. And there's a number of essentially servers running on my computer. There's a number of pieces of software listening on my computer. Well, we do recognize this one. There's some software on my computer and it's listening on port 12345. And that's the Netcat software. That's what I noticed there. Now, the other information, maybe the address information, this all zeros means uh, anyone is listening for any particular address. And that is, anyone can connect to it. We notice some other ports. If we look through the ports here, here's port 22. There's some software running on my computer listening on port 22. What is that software? It's the Secure Shell server. Every computer, when they boot up, they automatically starts a Secure Shell server. It's called the SSH daemon. SSHD is the software. So there's a Secure Shell server. Now there's another entry for 22 here. This is for IPv6 connections, IP version 6. This is for IP version 4. But the key thing to point or to, to realize from the output are the port numbers here. Sometimes there's both IPv4 and IP version 6. Sometimes there's just IPv6, which covers IP version 4. A bit confusing. Note just the port numbers. Port 80, every computer's running a web server. Port 22, every computer's running a secure shell server. Here's my computer running the Netcat server. What about the others? 3306? What is it? When you saw it, did you look in the services file for 3306? MySQL. We're running the MySQL database server on these computers, so it's listening there. Now, the slight difference it's listening only on the local, the special loopback address, meaning you cannot connect to my MySQL server from your computer. You must be on my computer to connect to my MySQL server. So that's the difference here. The all zeros means anyone can connect. This one means you have to be on my computer to connect to my server. So you can't communicate across the internet. 631 is the internet printing protocol. It's for communicating with a printer. 25 is for email. This is just for local email delivery, not for out on the internet. And I think that's covered them all. So there's some software running on your computer that listens. My Netcat server is still running, so now I go to computer 13 and I connect. 210, I would connect to the IP address, computer 10, port number, send my message, check the output of Netstat, and I see that computer 13 is connected to computer 10, the connection is established, they're still connected, 
Netcat uses TCP by default. Foreign address is listening on port 12345. And my Netcat client, when I started it, was given the port 47990. The operating system gave it to us. We don't do it as the user. So this shows the active connections or the current connections. If you add the minus L, you show the servers listening. One thing you may have noticed, the server's still there. I can still send back. But if we look at the listening connections, it's no longer there. That is, there's no longer one, a, a listening connection on port 12345. That is because Netcat is a very, very simple server. As soon as someone connects to it, it's no longer listening for others, it's just communicating with that one that con connects. So you can't have multiple people connect to the Netcat server at the same time. Real servers, normally when someone connects, it creates a child process to deal with that client and then listens for more connections. That's why all of you can log into my secure shell server. I've got one secure shell server running. Whenever you connect, it creates a copy of itself and then waits for the next person to connect. We'll see that when we look at web servers later. So from netstat minus t, you can see information about current connections. Add the minus l and you can see those which are uh, listening. The ways those listening is very useful to know what servers are running on your computer because that may be a potential security flaw in that if there's a server running on your computer then others outside may be able to connect to your server and do things. So that's useful to know what's running on your computer. When we close... I close the server. The client's closed, the connection was closed then. So I close the connection and it's not even in a time wait state because we haven't communicated. So you know what about applications communicating using netstat minus T.